to thank the Almighty God for ensuring that this crisis that has rocked many parts of the country, including Kaduna State, has been very mild in our state. Apart from the two or three days of disturbance and looting, we've had relatively peaceful protests in, in this state. And we believe that everyone has the right to protest peacefully. And we deployed the security agencies to protect everyone. But I just want to draw your attention to the fact that no system is perfect. God did not create human beings to be perfect. So our police is not perfect. We have bad eggs amongst the police, just as we have very good people amongst the police. So it is with every organization, whether it is the civil service, politicians, we have good politicians, we have bad politicians. We have good civil servants, we have bad civil servants. But you cannot condemn an entire profession or a group of people because of the misconduct of a few. SARS is only a small unit in the Nigerian police. And even in, among SARS, they are not all bad. Yes, some of them must have been quite bad and killed many people. But that should not be used to frame the police in a manner that people feel justified to attack and kill policemen. I have seen a video where a policeman was attacked, killed, and burned to death. For what? That policeman is a human being. It's a creation of God. He has children, he has families, he has wives. Who is going to look after them? How can you justify that? What kind of Savagery would make you kill a person simply because he's wearing a uniform. The Nigerian police is the only police we have. It is our collective duty as citizens, as leaders, to come together and help the police to be better. They are not perfect. Let us find out why they are not doing what they are supposed to do. What are their constraints? Are they being funded well? Are they being equipped well? Are they being trained? Let's fix that. And then fish out the bad eggs and throw them out and get more and better people in the police. That's the way to have a functioning police force. But we cannot condemn our police in its entirety. Because there are many decent, good people in the police. Just as there are many decent, good people among lecturers, among politicians, and so on. And there are bad people, there are lecturers that will insist that you give them money or sleep with them before they pass, they, 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 they say you pass your exam. That does not mean all lecturers are bad or should be killed. It is not right, it is not fair, just and reasonable. So my appeal to you is to bear in mind that much as you are dissatisfied or angry about any issue and you want to protest, bear in mind that there are groups and people with different agendas from you that may use your anger and your protest to achieve their own ends. Be careful about that. And never, never resort to violence or violation, violation of the law. To break into warehouses and steal food meant for the poor and vulnerable. It's theft. You are a thief. You are a criminal. And when we get you, you are going to prison without option of fine. We did not hold any food. We kept it to ensure that we plan the distribution so that those that deserve it get it. Because we've done two rounds of food distribution using our own resources. Civil servants in Katuna State contributed 25% of their salary to buy palliatives. Because we care. And we distributed that. But in the course of distribution, some gaps were discovered. In some places, the distribution was politicized. Some that did not deserve it got it. And those that deserve it did not get. So we took our time to plan it properly. In addition, we are worried 
the possibility of another lockdown because that was the purpose of the palliatives anyway to be distributed to people of need during lockdown with, this, with the removal of the lockdown we didn't see any urgency to distribute we wanted to get a perfect system the deputy governor has explained that in detail we have no incentive to keep any food but those that went into warehouses and stole this food are not the poor and the vulnerable. They are not the ones that deserve it. They are thieves, and we'll get them. We have got enough of them now to make an example, but we'll continue to search. It will take as long as it will take. We are getting intelligence. We are picking them up one by one, and we'll continue. Luckily, this thing happened in one or two local governments, so we know where the thieves are, and we are searching for them and they will face justice. As you can see, these are the protection looters and the recovery. They will be recovered from them. And after we are done with the investigation, they will be awaiting for the scope of law. They are mainly those that involved uh, in the looting. That's uh, government warehouses and uh, uh, private uh, companies. And I think so far we arrested and arraigned not, not less than uh, 36 suspects. We have already arrested not less than 36 suspects. Um, we have arrested more. I think we have 67 suspects for now. And we have already arraigned more than uh, more than 36 suspects before the court of law. And after we are done with the investigation, I'm assuring you we are going to arrange them before a court of competent jurisdiction. And uh, we already warned the members of the public, particularly those that looted government uh, uh, palliatives or whatever and uh, private uh, uh, businesses to return this thing peacefully through their traditional rulers. Or else we are going to conduct a home to house site with a view to recovering and then arresting the perpetrators of this looting. Well, we, as of uh, yesterday, I, I contacted all the traditional rulers through the area commander Kapui. Where, wherever he got to, he put me on phone with the traditional ruler. I think they are properly warned and I think they, are, they have started doing something. That's why we have started making a lot of recoveries. The tight and the icon group in the